In today's video, I'm gonna be showing you guys four Dollar Tree spring DIYs. Some of them are neutral, one of them has a few pops of color, and I cannot wait to show you. So with all that being said, let's jump into today's DIYs. Okay, okay, my excitement in the beginning of this was not for nothing. I'm still so excited for this video, you guys. I'm absolutely loving everything, how everything turned out. So let's start out with this Choose Kindness um, sign from Dollar Tree. These are new signs. I have never seen these before because they have frames around them. See, this is what I mean when I tell you that Dollar Tree pays attention to social media and the DIYers because it seems that the things that we do, they end up coming out with. So a lot of the times we'll take the signs and we'll make frames for them. Well, now they have frames. So I just start by popping the frame off. Now, generally they pop off pretty easily. For some reason, this one did not wanna cooperate. So I did have to fight with it. One of the pieces broke, but honestly, I like rustic decor, so it didn't bother me. Um, if that bothers you, you can get another one off of a different sign or even fill it with some wood putty and then sand down that seam and it'll be flawless. You won't even be able to tell that it was broken. Next, I go in with my Waverly chalk paint and give it a distress coat. Unfortunately, I was out of my Dixie Belle white. You guys, that's how much I love it. It was totally gone, um, so definitely check them out. I'll leave the link in the description box. I gave it a little bit of heat, that way it could dry quicker because as most of you know, if you've been around for any length of time, then you know Melissa is super impatient. And then once that was dry, I went, out, I went in with the same contact paper that I have here on my table. I also covered the front of my little fireplace DIY with this. If you haven't seen that one, it is like a Christmas or winter DIY, but a fireplace is something you can have up all year round. It is a tabletop fireplace, so it's just to display your little decor, and I love the way that turned out. So I know there's a lot of new people, so again, I'll leave that in the cards if you guys wanna check that out. Once that was done, originally I cut it right at the edge, which, which I wish I would have done all the way around, but I ended up just cutting the other corners and then folding them over. Now, the reason I said I wish I hadn't done that was because right here, we're gonna glue the frame back down. So I was gonna start with the bottom and then I realized that the sides need to go on first. So I started with the sides and then once I had the entire frame glued down, on the side that I cut it flush with the sign, it wanted to pull up. So I guess I should say, I wish that I had um, folded it over on all of the sides. I set that aside to work on the wreath and I take a grapevine wreath from Hobby Lobby and some greenery, or I should say floral picks from Dollar Tree, and I just cut away the picks from the stem. Now, I didn't have my wire cutters inside. Right now I'm working in the house. Um, I can't wait to get to the new house with my shed and get all set up. I cannot wait to get back in my shed, you guys. Trust me, I am itching to do a bigger project. I just don't have the space or, you know, it's winter, so it's hard to use the tools in the house. Anyway, it's a whole thing. Um, but anyway, I just cut the green part, so kind of like the plastic part on the pick, and then once I got it down to the wire, then I just bent it back and forth a few times, and it came right off. Is this the easiest or more or most efficient way to do this? Absolutely not. So if you have wire cutters, please use those. Um, but I just had to use what I have on hand. That's the beauty about DIY. Sometimes we have to use um, non-conventional items to DIY with and that's okay. So once I had all of the greenery off of the pick and my fingers were hurting from <laughs> bending the wire back and forth, I just start by pushing the picks into the grapevine wreath. That's why I love these grapevine wreaths so much because you really don't need glue unless you're going to glue on like some embellishments or something like that. But for the most part, you can arrange this just by shoving the ends of the picks into the grapevine wreath. Now I left this part in because I last I asked in my last video if you guys enjoyed 
seeing my process of how I arrange things. I always cut it down short or speed it up. Um, but if you guys want to see that, then I'm more than happy to leave that in for you guys. If you guys are enjoying my content and would like to see more like it in the future, I would love if you would become part of my crafty family and then you just click that bell and all. That way you're notified every single time I upload and also those thumbs up really help my channel to grow so it would mean so much to me if you guys would give this video a big thumbs up or a thumbs down if you don't enjoy it at all. Once I was satisfied with the way that my wreath looked, I laid it down on my sign to make sure that it would fit correctly, and then I went in with a chip brush and my antique Waverly Wax, and I just dry brushed all the way around the edges, as well as on the inside of the sign, just to make it look a little bit old and weathered. Next, I go in with my welcome transfer. Now, unfortunately, this one is retired, but I just couldn't find anything else that would fit at the bottom. I tried to use other things and I just was wasting time. So I went in with my welcome transfer and my black chalk paste, and then I peel back that amazing transfer to reveal that gorgeous image. I also forgot to mention that I fuzz my transfer before I use it, meaning I get a little bit of fuzz on the back. That way when I lay it down on my surface and peel it up, it doesn't stick and stretch my transfer. And then that way I can keep it nice for future uses. Um, Chalkator claims 12 uses out of each, but me and many other designers have got upwards of 50 uses as long as you take care of yours. As you can see, I just made kind of like a half a bow. So I took this tan ribbon that I had, I folded it in half, glued it, and then created a ribbon out of it. But I just, or I should say a bow, but I hated the way that it looked. So I um, trashed that and I just got a bigger piece and left it full. And then I made a simple bow with that. And then to attach it to my wreath, all I did was take a piece of jute in the middle. So before you tie it, you just tie it around the wreath and then you make your ribbon or your bow and you attach it to your wreath. So essentially you're killing two birds with one stone. I then cut the ends in dovetails, I fluff it up, and then I glue the wreath to my sign. And that was it, you guys. I absolutely love the way that this turned out. I feel like they revamped those fuzzy floral picks from Dollar Tree this year. I know that these are not new, but like I said, I feel like they revamped them. You guys can let me know in the comments down below, were these the exact same ones they had last year and the years prior, or are these brand new? Did they revamp them? Okay guys, I don't know about you, but I cannot get enough of these wood rounds from Dollar Tree. I just cannot get over that at the time they were a dollar a piece. They're really good size. Now they are a little bit thin, but what do you expect for a dollar or a dollar 25? So I feel that for the price, this is a really good bang for your buck. Now I know a lot of you guys have not been able to get your hands on these, but I always go to the Dollar Tree D stash group on Facebook. And if I can't find something, they'll find it for you. Now you do have to pay a little bit extra plus PayPal fees and shipping, but if you want the item bad enough, then desperate times call for desperate measures. But I just start off with the transfer that I want to use. This transfer and the other chalk couture items that I used in this video, if they are available on the site, I will link it in my link tree. You'll see um, a few links down, um, chalk couture items, 
used in February 7th video and then click that link it'll take you to the cart and all the items will be in your cart you can add and subtract from your cart as you like don't forget anybody who signs up for my club couture this month will get five free b size transfers they never do this so if you guys want to be a part of my club and just needed that extra push now is the time also the new catalog comes out tomorrow the new items are absolutely amazing oh god help my purse <laughs> but anyway i just wanted to get that out of the way so i take the um, wood round i lay my transfer down and then mark where i need the middle part to go and then i paint the middle part white after i tape it off with my painter's tape once that was dry, then I tape off the top and the bottom of the white piece and I paint that with my dried sage Dixie Bell paint. After I hit it with a little bit of heat, then of course I pull back that tape and that is another one of my favorite parts of crafting. Just little things like that. I don't, it's so silly, but it's just one of those feelings like ah, I did it. You know what I mean? But anyway, I always like to give these a really good dry. That way when I lay my transfer down, it doesn't pull up paint on the back of my transfer and, um, it's a little bit harder to get paint off of the back of the transfer. It's definitely doable, but it's a little tricky. So if I can avoid it, I do try to avoid it at all costs. Next, I wanted to make some pinstripes at the top and bottom. So once again, I just marked out the width line that I wanted, and then I paint that with my ink Waverly chalk paint. Once you peel back that tape, this is what you should be left with. Next, I take my transfer. Once again, I fuzz it. Then I take my storm chalk paste and my black chalk paste, and I do every other roof with the storm and every other body of the house with the storm. And then obviously, next I go in with my black and I do the opposite in the black. For the wording, I did our life, our story, and half of our home in black, and then the other half, you guys know I love my ombre effect, so I did half storm, half black, and then to join the two colors, I put a little bit of water on the edge of my finger, and then I swirl the two colors together, joining them and making them look a little bit more cohesive. You guys know what time it is peel back that transfer to reveal that amazing image now I like mine to look a little bit distressed sometimes so what I did to get that distressed look when I pull back my transfer either you can let it dry a little bit or you can just not put as much paste as you normally would Next, I made a bow out of two different ribbons. If you guys have never seen this bow tutorial, I have 11 different easy Dollar Tree bows. Um, I made a whole video on it, so I will leave that in the cards in the right-hand corner for you guys. And after I glued my um, bow down, then once again, I took some random greenery. I believe this is, yeah, I see the tag. This is from Hobby Lobby. Originally, it was $4.99. It was 40% off, so around 3 bucks. which to me, this 
floral looks really high end so that's a steal in my book and I just cut some away from the main stem and then tucked a few pieces behind each side of the ribbon and then to or bow I keep saying ribbon <laughs> and then to finish this off I just put a jute hanger on the back with some hot glue and that was it you guys I absolutely love the way that this turned out I can't figure out which part of the sign is my favorite is it the stripes is it the wording what about the bow I don't know <laughs> but I know you guys will let me know in the comments down below. Look, you guys, I was a poet and I didn't even know it. This one is so easy, you guys. You could do this with your eyes closed, but this wooden puzzle my kids had, I can't find the other pieces. We were just gonna throw it away, but I'm a craft hoarder, so <laughs> I was like, no, don't throw that away. I can make a sign with that. Are you out of your mind? Gosh. <laughs> but anyway, I pull out my little scrapbook book of scrapbook paper and I pick out the one I want so naturally I chose the one that looked like faux wood and then I measure it out and cut it down now don't do this you guys again I'm working inside I need to bring in some Mod Podge or some glue sticks but it was late there was snow out and freezing so I just used my hot glue no big deal Next, I take these little foam bunnies from Dollar Tree. I believe these are new. I have never seen them before, and I just thought that they were so cute. Let me know if you guys have seen these in the previous years, but I paint three of them black. Um, in the end, we're only going to use two, but if you guys can see the little bunnies, in order to make them look kind of distressed, all I did when I dried it was get a little close with my heat gun and it kind of shriveled them up a little bit and made them look distressed. It was not on purpose, but once I did it, I was like, oh shoot, that's pretty cool. So I ended up doing it to the others. Um, but after that, then I go in with my welcome to our home transfer. This is a part of the house patterns transfer. Again, I'll leave that in the link in the link tree in the description box below. I transfer on the welcome to our home with my eucalyptus chalk paste and then the end of the home I did it with my black and then I had this little house ornament from Walmart at Christmas time so I glued that to the top and then for the little bunnies I felt that they were missing something so I just tied a simple little collar with a bow around their neck with some jute glued them to either side and that was it you guys so simple and easy this took probably 20 minutes to put together and i absolutely love the way that it turned out this is another super simple one you could do in your sleep but i made these a few years back and i made them before i had a youtube channel and they they've been on my hutch and i've been wanting to show you guys so i figured this was the perfect video so i want to make brown faux eggs and to do that i take my pumpkin waverly chalk paint as well as some antique wax and i get it almost to like a terracotta color and then I add a little bit of white just to lighten them up and it makes the perfect brown egg color. So I just paint all of my eggs with two very good coats drying in between each coat. Now if you look closely at real brown eggs, you'll notice that they have little brown speckles on them so what I did was take a paintbrush now this one was a bit dense so it didn't work as well it still did work but it had little tiny specks so I just dipped it in my antique wax and then with my finger I kind of like pull back on it I, I know this is this has a word I don't know what it's called but I kind of pull back on the bristles creating little tiny speckles when I went in with the chip brush, it gave me larger speckles to make this look more realistic. So I definitely recommend using several different brush sizes. That way you can have different spec sizes. 
Next, I go in with some raffia. Now, I did not use the original raffia because it was really thin. Um, in the end, I did make a bow with it, and you'll see that here in a minute. But I went in my stash and pulled out this raffia that I got back at Christmas time. It came in a pack with red, green, and the tan raffia. Obviously, we're only using the tan, um, but I just wrap it around the top at first and then twist at the bottom and pull it up around the sides and then tied it in the middle. Next, I go in with a piece of cardboard. I am so bad at throwing things away. This probably could have went in the trash. I probably could have found something different, but <laughs> I have problems, you guys. Send help. <laughs> Isn't it funny the things like we're like, oh my god, I can do something with that. And it's like, no girl, you probably should just throw that away. <laughs> anyway, I took the piece of cardboard. I measured it out because I wanted to put a little sign on the front of my eggs. And then I painted front and back with my Ink Waverly chalk paint after I cut it down with my utility knife. Next, I went in with my Farm Fresh Produce Transfer, only using the Farm Fresh. And instead of placing my transfer onto my cardboard, I placed the cardboard onto the transfer. That way I know I'm getting an even fit. Next, I go in with my White Waverly Chalk Paint. Yes, you heard me right. This was an experiment. I've never used the squeegee with the paint before, but I just wanted to try it out for you guys. And look how amazing this turned out. So if you guys are going to use chalk paint, make sure you wash your transfer immediately. Like, don't waste any time. And try it with a squeegee. It might work much better than a paintbrush. But I always recommend the chalk paste. It works best with our transfers and your transfers are going to last longer. But if you're in a pinch and you're on a budget, definitely just go ahead and use what you have on hand. Don't use acrylic. That will not work. But you can definitely use chalk paint. Next, I glue my sign down to the front. Like I said, I made a little bow out of the leftover raffia, glued that to the top, and that was it, you guys. Look how cute these little faux brown eggs turned out. I absolutely love them. Like I said, I have a set. It didn't have the farm fresh on the front, but like I said, I wanted to bring this to you guys, so let me know. Did I get this color spot on, or would you make it a different color? Also, let me know in the comments which project was your favorite. And as always, you guys, I appreciate every single one of you. I have a buy me a coffee link in the description box below if you enjoy my work and would like to support my channel. But as always, you do not have to do that. I appreciate you just being here. With all that being said, I love you guys so much. If you haven't subbed already, I know you guys are watching and you're not subbing. So what are you doing with your life? I would love to have you. I'm going to be doing giveaways again soon and much more fun to come. So with all that being said, if nobody has told you today, you guys are absolutely stunning, amazing, and worthy. And I love you with all my heart and soul. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye. Check out the videos popping up to your left that YouTube recommends while you're waiting on my next upload, or you can join the DIY fam to your right.